Today's presentation will be how dead number intercept, aka disconnect the telephone number, was done in a Western Electric 355 type step-by-step -step office. The same procedure was also done in the number one step. Depending on the time period that the step-by-step -step was in service, they could have done it two ways. They could have had a dead level trunk that appeared on a cordboard switchboard, depending on the size of the city, or a machine would then answer the line and tell you the number was disconnected. Later in the 70s and 80s, they had automatic intercept in some exchanges that would tell you to change the number if it had been changed. I'm at the mainframe where the connector block is. There are four blocks for every 100 telephone numbers, 25 numbers in each block. This particular type of a connector shelf is a four wire uh, connector because it's a four party or eight party um, connector shelf. So here at 45, and that's the last two digits of the phone number, and in this case, I'm gonna be using um, 5845. So where you see 45, I have two pins tied together with a jumper, the next two, the next two, and then for the ringing would be the last two. What happens on the block is this row of blocks are wired to the connector shelf bank. The next row of pins are strapped together on the bottom all the way across on every block. The third set of pins is the ring side of the line. The fourth is strapped together as a bus and then so on and so on. So if there's a telephone number assigned to a phone line, then a jumper here, such as this one that I'm wiggling, is actually connected to a line circuit and there's a phone connected to the end of that. In the case of 45 here, there is no jumper going elsewhere. It's just strapped from the front row to here and so on. So this is an intercept bus. <clears throat> and I will show the strapping on the bottom of the block in a moment. So for any phone number not assigned, we install a jumper between the tip and the tip of the intercept bus, the ring and the ring of the intercept bus, the sleeve and the sleeve of the intercept bus, and in this particular case, the sleeve lead for ringing. Here is the bottom of the block, and you can see the rows that have been tied together, and then the ones that just has a wire on it. I have different type of intercept trunks. In this particular case, we're looking at a two circuit on the top and then another one and then a selector level intercept, which I have not yet wired that up. The black tubes trips the ringing and then cuts the audio through. This is mounted at the top of a nine foot relay rack. As you see, the tube is lit. I'm going to hold the camera and try to dial the phone number. Sorry about the shakiness. Every connector shelf in a central office will have what's called an intercept busy relay. The purpose of that intercept busy relay is to not allow any other connectors on this shelf 
to um, cut into the recording until uh, either the person that's listening to the recording hangs up or if there was a timeout circuit that I don't have, would time it out. I have a 7A announcement machine and this was a common piece of equipment located in the most central offices. site uh, so it was a recording made over the long distance network and I wanted it to sound as close to the real thing as it would have been in its original day this was a very brief video that I was requested to make if you have something you would like to see if I have it I would be willing to make a short video of it if it's not too uh, complex uh, to do. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks.